The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Tuesday, October 8th, 2019, season 15, episode number 59. Welcome to another edition of The Break Life in the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. What? I thought I might have to host the show. I didn't know. I hadn't seen you all day. I thought it was going to be 60, but I do have there. I do have like a job outside of just getting ready for the show. Yeah, you're right. No respect. No respect. No, I'm saying you might miss it. You thought you, I was going to miss it? Possible. You have missed shows in the past. With, Every once with, in a while. It happens. We get Every big, once in a while. We get big is... boys. <laughs> is that what happens? hasn't happened often during the season. There's never but... a time when I miss the show when I'm not. When I'm happy to miss the show, I love coming and doing the show with you guys. Danny joining us again today, special Hi guest. Thank you for joining us. Always. Yep. Dave. Hi. Oh. Hi, Derek. Hey, everybody. I don't know why he went up an octave there. Hi. But, you puberty. Know. That was puberty day right there <laughs> with a beard. With a beard, right? A full grown beard. Hi. All right. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. It's a gumbo show, so we'll dip all around the NFL and. Uh, around the Cowboys and what? <laughs> nothing. Sorry, we'll just, we'll just see what where the where the show takes us. We got a lot of stuff we can talk about, right? So I want to start first though with uh, injuries for a few guys coming out of this game. A couple guys that were injured going into the game, uh, but I just kind of want to get some status on where they are. Lyle Collins, talk to me about where he is at this point. He did get hurt during the game, left the game. Um, where what do we know about him at this point? No two knees are the same, no two injuries are the same, but it's an MCL sprain, and we're talking about it like he's going to have a chance to play Sunday, which is one of those this is insane type of things because <laughs> that's what knocked. That's but that's what, what football is. That's what's knocked Antoine Woods out since September 15th. He, it's been three weeks. and he, I mean, It's always and different. It's again, two different knees, two different sprains, two different guys. I get that. Still kind of crazy to think he could play six days after spraining his MCL. Yeah. Yeah, and I I think when you look at the team, and I hate to do this, you know, you look at, oh, you're playing an 0 four team against the Jets, and they do have some talent, though, up front. So, you know, you have the quarterback back. They yeah. do have their quarterback back. Yeah, he is. He's the, they named him the starter. He's going to start. Mm. Good. Good for him. So it does change things a bit. Sam Darnold, for those of you yeah. who aren't familiar. <laughs> Nick, why'd you go? No, yeah. because I, well, because okay. they're, yeah, he's not the best, but I mean, they will be a better football team with him. He'll have some games where he's like really, really good. So, yeah. you, you, so yeah, for some reason, the Cowboys better. tend to make some players become really, really good. Yeah. So it, it happens. Yeah. That well, really what I was talking about was going back more to Lyell. Let's say he doesn't play. I think the who starts? Cam? That probably depends on Tyron Smith, which he is, they're optimistic about him. Coming back from his ankle, which this is again is promising, crazy, it's high ankle sprain, and might be on the field two weeks later. If if it's if Tyron plays, then I would say it's Tyron and Cam. If Tyron doesn't play, then it's probably sixty minutes of Cam and Brandon Knight. Well, take me to that a little. I, I would honestly, I think I'd start Brandon Knight. I think I would at right tackle. First of all, tell me how did he play this last Sunday when he had to play in relief of Lyle Collins? I I think he played well based off of that. Um, but I think that I think we're grading, you know, on on we're not grading on the curve there. We're like, hey, this this guy. Um, no, we are actually because he comes in, it's like, oh man, it's Brandon Knight's never played before. It's not too bad, but yeah, Dak almost got killed a couple times, but I think he he hung in there pretty good. <laughs> almost died, but hey, it's, it's okay. I thought he played very well for an undrafted rookie who spent more time at guard than tackle the last two months. To come in cold off the bench in the third quarter, I thought he played very well. It's not he wasn't perfect. That's right. not what I'm saying. But, but if, I thought he handled the circumstances great. But if Lyle Collins, that was Lyle Collins, we would be wondering if he, you know, why did they sign him? That, well, that, yeah, but yeah, again, I grade on a curve. Yeah. You, I always say that. I mean, yeah, I hold him to a different standard than Brandon Knight. Yeah, yeah. and I grade on a curve when it's t- progress reports, but when it's time for the end of the year report card, I mean, it is what it is. I mean. Yeah, we disagree yeah, on we that. Always, we, we always disagree we always on that. Will. Mean dad. No, we, we will always disagree. We, we've done that several times. Is is Blake Jarwin better than J, Jason Witten? 
Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, Stuff like I, that. My expectations for a player always influence how I perceive, like how I grade them, you know? So Antoine Woods gets a higher grade last year for where he was coming out of training camp as opposed to a Malik Collins or any other, you know. Well, then how you would even grade him this year coming oh, in yeah, as a absolutely. starter. Yeah, right, my yeah. expectations for him are different than right. they, Yeah, it, anyway, that's a different conversation. It but, is. Um, and speaking of, he was warming up. Kind of going back to injuries. Antoine? He was, yeah, Antoine? He, he was warming up with I, the team. I mean, knowing he wasn't going to play, but he was warming up and yeah, he kept sweat. confusing me. He had that jersey T-shirt on. What yeah. did he? What was he wearing? It was like, did he have his jersey? I thought he was just wearing his jersey. Yeah, he yeah. wore his jersey with sweatpants and just yeah. kind of, you know, kind of like, kind of high school vibes, like trying to weed one of the guys. <laughs> right. And you know, I'm like, <laughs> Not, well, I don't mean that in a no, mean but way. it is. That's what yeah. exactly what it is. Oh, it takes yeah. you back to high school. Yeah, yeah you, you still got the jersey on. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. You know, and he, he had different pants on, but so does Quinn. So you never know what's going on with with that either. <laughs> I think Antoine will play this week. Me too. Again, just me wildly speculating on a Tuesday. How much did they miss him last week? Well, Aaron Jones looked like, you know, but, Jim but, Brown. But but when we talked about it yesterday, I think we all agreed the linebackers were the biggest issue. So so was the defensive line I just disagree. as much a part of that? I, I, I disagree. I think when he gets to the linebacker, I mean, you don't want it to get to the linebackers all the time. And, I, and Yeah, I, but I think, again, what I was saying at least, and I'm not going to speak for you guys, what I was saying from what I was watching – it looked like there were situations because everybody has it means gap integrity. Everybody has a gap, and it looked like the linebackers weren't filling their gaps. That's not necessarily about the defensive line. I didn't see a lot of defensive linemen necessarily getting just thrown around and moved out of the way. It just seemed like there were gaps that weren't being filled, and I thought those were the gaps that the linebackers should fill. I the linebackers didn't play well, but I thought the defensive tackles got washed out of the out of the play pretty frequently mm-hmm. last week. I mean, maybe they were. P- pressing to rush the passer because you know Rodgers is so important to everything the Packers want to do, but I don't. I really, I'm not sure anybody in the front seven had a good game. I mean, not a not a great one. The, the guy that actually did stand out a couple times was Covington. Now, yeah. as making a good play, sometimes when you get washed out, you don't see that they're out of the picture, you know. But yeah, nobody up front really played well, and there's a reason he starts. I think getting your starting. One technique back would be big this week. But isn't that how Rod kind of teaches this whole thing, that he kind of tells them, here's your gap, and get up your gap, yeah. and get up field. And so it's it may look like they're getting washed up when really they had their gap. It's just their gap was not where the ball went, and somebody else was responsible for that gap. Right? Well, true. I mean, I'm not saying it's just on them, but it's just like with any position, you want your starter back out there. So the last couple games, he's been out, what, three games? He missed the Dolphins game, right? Two, three. Yeah, he, yeah. he's been out since the Dolphins game. Yeah, yeah. it'd be nice it. to have the stability of having your starter back out there, right? Yeah, you would think that he can make a difference. Cause I mean, you know, I'm I I don't think the defensive tackles played their best game against the Packers. All right, talk to me about uh, Cam Fleming. How did he perform last week in relief of Tyron Smith? I actually got in an argument with Rob Phillips about that yesterday. Is like, you and Rob? Yeah, I know, you? right? Yeah. Oh, What's that look they like? Are you training they? camp? Yeah. yeah. How do I miss that? Uh, I again, I guess it's ex- a fun argument. It's fr- it's not ex- it's a no. friendly argument. Expecta- again, expectations are everything. And I like I was like, you know, for not being Tyron and coming in, and you know, we've <laughs> seen we've seen left tackles give up seven sacks when Tyron wasn't in there before. I thought he played all right. And like when I say all right, I mean they didn't lose this game because of Cam Fleming's inability to protect Dak. So like right. that's that's what I and Rob was like. You can't be serious. Like he did not play well. Like there were flags, there were sacks, yeah. there was all, and he makes a valid point. Yeah, you know, compared Ish. to he he didn't play a very good game. But it, like, did they lose because of their inability to protect Dak from from edge rushers? I don't think so. Like Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith had good games. Like yes, I know, but that's not why they lost. You know, and not in my opinion, yeah. at least. Maybe it was part of it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, no. So, <laughs> yeah. You can always, yes. Yeah. You yeah. can always point because, lots yeah. of fingers in lots yeah. of directions. Because in a game like this, there was lots of reason to go. I mean, there was yeah. a lot of. Because you can't just go with well. stats when it comes to the left tackle of how many times he gave up a sack or whatever, because all it takes is a couple of plays early in the game. And then you have to ask yourself mm-hmm. did Dak play well? Did Dak look like he was ever rushing? Yeah. He, d- he did. He had some throws that he normally doesn't make. And so, you know. You don't have to worry about it when 77's over here, but when it's not 77 and you're already getting hit a couple times, that might change. You yeah. know what you. So I, I or do are we think, max protecting more than we normally would? Yeah. There's a lot of things that get affected by early pressure. Right? Yeah. It's the ultimate team game, right? Yeah. But 
if you were going to rank the reasons why they lost, like minus three in turnover differential, Packers averaging five yards a carry, where do you put that? How much of that stems from him feeling pressured? That, yeah. uh, that, okay, that's what I'm asking you. Okay, so where me, do you put that? In there. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Let's simplify How far that. Down Let's do simplify you that. It? Let's simplify those two things. If this game you had to put it on one or the other, offense or defense, as to the main reason why the Cowboys lost, which one do you go? Mm, that's tough. Um, defense. I st- I put it on the defense because I mean, and look, you lose the turnover battle by three. That's really bad, but it ain't helping the defense. It's not helping the defense, but the defense just didn't put up much in the way of resistance either. I mean, again, Aaron Jones, uh, one hundred and eighty-five combined yards, I think, yeah. S- seventy-five receiving and one hundred and seven rushing. First opponent to ever rush for four touchdowns against the Cowboys in a game. Yeah. I think too, if you don't have such an early deficit, it allows the Cowboys to have more options in terms of running the ball and not having to but, rely on getting those yards. But why did they have a deficit? Was it because their offense? I mean, if it was, what was exactly. it at halftime? It was seventeen, 17 nothing. nothing. I mean, is that on the defense? What What if it was seventeen to, to thirteen? What if it was seventeen to ten? Yeah. Wouldn't no, be a deficit. I mean, we were late into the third Off- quarter and still thirty-one-three. I think they right? lost because of the offense. That's. I mean, that's a great question. I that, didn't really it, think of that. It's a hard thing to definitively answer because let's be Garrett. The, the okay. offense put the defense in a terrible spot. The defense didn't necessarily rise to that occasion either. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like when Garrett was asked about the first interception. Was it on Cooper or was it on Dak? He's like, Dak could have thrown a better ball. Cooper could have made a better catch. Moving on. Yeah. Offense could play better. Yeah. Defense could and play both better. can be true too. Both can be true. Garrett's you know really what? good. Let's let's make sorry. Some, let's make some kicks on special teams. Let's yeah. th- let's well, put them in there. I got a whole segment special for <laughs> for special teams. We got a whole special segment for special teams. Uh, let's go ahead and take our first break. When we come back, I do still want to ask one other question about the offensive line. I want to ask: Do you guys think that at this point, let's assume for a second that both your starting tackles are out? Should the Cowboys consider Connor Williams and maybe sliding him out to tackle um, as opposed to uh, to going with uh, Fleming and going with Brandon Knight? We'll talk about that when we come right back. This is DallasCowboys.com Radio. While a player can look good on paper, it's when he's out on the field that you really find out what he's made of. That's why the Cowboys rely on more than just stats and scouting reports when building their team. When picking a tractor, it's why you should rely on more than just specs and features. You've got to take it out and put it to the test. The Cowboys did when they named John Deere their official tractor. Experience one for yourself. Visit myjohndeeredealer.com slash football. Do you want the most interesting, up-to-the-minute Dallas Cowboys news straight from the star in Frisco? How about exclusive and on command? That's right, news and nuggets you can't find anywhere else. With our exclusive Cowboys content on Alexa, you can have all the answers, secrets, stories, and more. What's Stephen Jones thinking during a game? What's Joe Looney's favorite pregame meal? We take your questions to Cowboys players and coaches, and you can hear the answers directly back to you. Just say, Alexa, open Dallas Cowboys. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. The excitement of Dallas Cowboys football is back at AT AT&T Stadium. The place is going crazy in Arlington, Texas. Don't miss your chance to see the Cowboys live when they host their NFC East rivals, the Eagles, Giants, and Redskins, plus the Green Bay Packers and more. Elliott works his way through and walks the dog. Single game tickets are on sale now. Get them before they're gone. First and goal, quarterback sneak. Prescott pushes up the middle. Touchdown. Visit DallasCowboys.com to get your tickets today. Back to the break. Welcome back. It is the second segment of the break live from SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We're doing a show. We're talking about a little bit of everything. We've been spending some time on the offensive line. The question I posed right before the break was, do you think the Cowboys should consider moving Connor Williams out to tackle? Assuming that Tyron and Lyle both are out for this next game, would you consider moving Connor out there to get a better five offensive lineman onto the field? Mm. And you're putting Xavier Suofilo at left guard, or you, you take your Joe pick Looney? between him and Joe. Both of them, I think, are really Seems good. Xavier's been the first guy off the bench when he they would probably be the him. guy. Yeah. So this is if both of them can't play. Both your tackles are out this game. 
you can either go with Brandon Knight and Cam Fleming, and you don't have to move any other pieces, or you can take Connor and put him at one of those positions and throw one of the other guards I'll tell in you and this. just have Cam out there. I would at least get Connor some practice at tackle so you can do it if if, if it, it starts going, if it starts going <laughs> south. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would at least get him some reps. Get a feel. It's where he played in college. It's yeah. not necessarily it's so new. I know it's changing two positions. Yeah. He I'm, played at left tackle, right? Yeah, left yeah. tackle. He's a pretty good tackle. In, That's in I'm, I'm kind of I'm I'm tempted to punt on this question just because I feel pretty good that Tyron's going to be able to play. Yeah, like the, you can't and, just play alone, can you? No, well, I just you know, ba- I worry that we're going to like scare the crap out of some of our <laughs> listeners talking about. Okay, this. let's make it clear. We think, or Dave thinks, that Tyron's going to play. Yeah, yeah. Now play the game. Okay. It, yeah, <laughs> it's a good <laughs> question. I mean, you're you're trying to figure out who your five best yeah, linemen yeah, are, and, right. and we don't really know if if if. Putting him at right tackle, uh, Connor Williams, actually, or putting him at tackle. Because if they both don't play, I think I put him at left tackle. And I put Cam back on the right side. Hmm. Put Connor at left tackle? Yeah, that's where okay. he played. No, if it, he's going to yeah. play. I mean, because because teams are – who do you think is a better run blocker? No, and w- uh, we've had this conversation – Should be the guard, right? You'd think. We've had this know. conversation a few dozen times. Is like I, you know, I don't know that the left tackle, right tackle thing means as much as it did back in the old days of the NFL. Like I think, well, you I got mean, it. but it does matter from a standpoint the of the actual tackle himself. Not so much the, the competition he goes against, right? But there, it's different when you think about just doing anything left-handed versus right-handed. Yeah, right, it changes, right? So that's the part where well, it's Dak is still right-handed. So I mean, and he's not, you know, he doesn't have eyes in the back of his head like most quarterbacks, right. other than Tony. But um, there's another guy in the league doing that, too. Now, I forgot who it was. I saw a couple. It might be Mahomes. He's unbelievable. But, uh, but I mean, you still have to worry about, you know, your blind side. And, and I think that was affecting him last week. I really do. I think it, he got a little trigger happy. Rattled? On his way to 463. Really? I do. I do. Don't you? I mean, I don't know. I mean... He was making some I think, terrible I think, throws. Honestly, but he, that's that's Dak. Dak has these moments when, for whatever reason, when he's just not completely on. I mean, it, we've seen that. This is not new. True. This is who but, Dak is. But he had some throws in there. I mean, like, you can say what you want, and I know it's been said probably on other shows that he really only had one pick or two picks, whatever. He, If that's the case, he really could have had five. You know I mean? he's He was lucky hmm. to have three. The he got argument, two back. The other argument, though, is that, in the offseason, we're hearing from John Kitna and Kellen Moore, you know, we want him to just rip it. We want him to throw <laughs> it. So do you see this more as, as confidence, like he's willing to take more risks? Mm. I wonder if Jason Garrett wants him to just let it rip like that. I I don't know. When you, like, yeah, letting it rip is important, but, man, like, the two the throw that got picked off over the middle by Sullivan, I, that's not letting it rip. That's just I'm not just, reading it the right, right. way. Yeah. Same no, thing, same thing make, with the throw to Cobb. You're making a very good point. I'm saying, I guess, just more no. generalizing. I, I want him to be good. confident and be willing to throw. And, you know, but that's like where you make like a high percentage throw where, like, you know, my guy's going to get it or they're not going to get it. Not, let me forget about this safety that dropped in coverage that I just don't see. But it, it happens. I mean, I, I don't know where he ranks now, but I believe Brett Favre retired as the all-time leader in touchdowns. He's not anymore, but he was. He might still be the all-time leader in interceptions. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, and he he was a gunslinger like that, and and, that, and you do that. Romo was guilty of that as well. Parcells calls him those indiscriminate throws. Right. Remember that? Yeah. So, and that's a good point. But a couple of those throws, though, that Dak made, and he got away with it, some penalties that kind of wiped out some of those interceptions as well. I, I do think we're getting back. We're getting off the rails. I I do think his, him kind of knowing that his whatever mental clock was a little bit you know shorter this game. So if that is true, I don't I don't want to go as far as say I disagree with you, but I'm not. I didn't come to that conclusion looking at the game again. But will he be better off with a uh, Connor Williams who hasn't played left tackle since he was in college doing that for him or Cam? Like yeah, Cam Fleming, who isn't as good as Tyron, but has played a lot of left tackle in the league. Yeah. Or Connor Williams, who was all Big Twelve two years ago and hasn't done it since. You know what? It's good. It's a, I think he'd probably feel better with Cam. I think so too, and I I would feel better with Cam. Yeah. I think we're also taking it to a different level too. We're th- we're thinking about the third and nine plays where you know here comes a rush or whatever. 
What about keeping it out of third and nine? And the way to do that is to run the ball on first down or, or second down and, get, and actually be ahead of the chains, which they didn't do very well. So who, what's their best options to run the football? You know, like is Suofilo better inside? Is it better to keep Connor in there? Is it better to run off a right? T- you know, these run blocks, we're just thinking about them pass in, blocking. in pass blocking. Yeah. But, you know, we all talked about it yesterday. If they could have run the ball a little bit better, you know, then they wouldn't or have more. been in those situations or more. But you, yeah. you run it more if you run it better. Well, but I thought they were running the ball fine this last game. Like, they were running it about fine that. until they, they weren't. Like, like here's Zeke, here's Zeke, here's Zeke, and then on second down and seven, he gets stuffed for, for no gain. So now but that's the nature of the run game. You're not every play is every run play is not going to be four yards. Like there are going to be some that don't work. Right. But I thought overall, as just the running game, I think they were effectively using the running game in the first half. I think I, that their offense overall was making too many mistakes, and that was more about, in my opinion, the passing game. They were turning the ball over. Right? I yeah. never, I yeah. never felt like they were stuffed in that game. I felt like. They fell behind, and then also, and then holding, holding penalties. They yeah. got, I looked this up this morning. They've been flagged for holding at least three times in four of the five games, and some of those are like offensive holding on a punt return. So it's important to de- designate between that and like an offensive lineman holding. Mm-hmm. But that's still so. 13, 13 holding calls this year. Isn't this a, isn't that a league thing? I thought I'd read an article somewhere saying that across the league, holding offensive holding yeah. is up quite the, a bit. And the league did kind of tell their officials like, "Holy crap, calm Shut down, up. calm yeah. with the cold with the holding." But, but that and offensive pass helped. interference seem to be two calls that this year, like refs for whatever reason, they they got a memo or something. Yeah. They're just like going crazy with them. The Cowboys need to clean it up. I mean, because yeah. I and I, I'm I'm thinking about it like. Zach Martin twice in the season opener. Remember, uncharacteristic on his part. Lyle had one in Washington, I believe. Connor had one that negated a big play against the Dolphins. Tavon had a huge one against the Packers. I know he's not. Tyron was called for one, the one where they, it was a home game because I remember that the camera just showed him say that. Yeah, that's right. That might have been. I think he said that's inaccurate. That might have been the Giants, too. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, Point being. They've done it a few two time two times too many. It would be nice if they could clean that up. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about the defense. I, I didn't get a chance yesterday to talk about Demarcus Lawrence. Uh, you look at the stat sheet after the game, he had one tackle. And I think people forget about the one play, which I thought was a phenomenal play. He probably should have been credited with something. I don't know, whatever. That's, it was just a phenomenal Sad, play. Yeah. But that play where, where, where Rodgers ends up with an incomplete pass, uh, but, but it was Tyron that made that play. I'm sorry, not Tyron. It was uh, DeMarcus that made that play. What do you guys think about him and, and not only how he played in this game, but really going back to the last two games, there's a lot of criticism out there right now about Demarcus Lawrence and him getting the big contract, and and now, according to many people, uh, fans out there saying that he's not necessarily living up to that contract. What are your thoughts? Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't agree with it because you got to remember, Demarcus, um, sort of like Byron Jones in the sense of like, if you really watch the game and study it, and and don't just look at stats, you'll see what he's really doing. And, and but unfortunately, and I don't I don't like to call out the fans, especially the ones that are listening. These are our diehard fans. But you got to be a, a, above that. You got to be better than that. He's made the Pro Bowl the last two years. The first year he had a lot of sacks. Second year, what did he have last year? Like ten, maybe ten and a half. I, I think. mean, he was there was a lot more players in the league that had more sacks. But they're seeing what a complete player that he is. And yeah, they didn't play well in this last game. But you know. They they played really well the day, the game before, but it's like it's like it doesn't matter so much you know as, as long as, as they're not winning. I think he's doing a good job. He was on pace for ten sacks before this last game. He could get an, a sack in this game and probably get back on that pace. I think he's playing fine, but you're not gonna ever judge him by by the numbers. He's more of a player than that. We've talked about that too, and he's been being double teamed, and it's it's an issue of we've said every player who gets a big contract. This is the criticism they have. Dak hasn't even signed a new contract, and he's getting that after mm-hmm. this week's game. So I, I don't, I don't think it's Demarcus is playing terribly. I think it's again, which we've talked about too, the offensive line and defensive line. You can't just look at the stats; you have to look at the game and see what they're doing right. that isn't showing up in the numbers. I mean, I've I've been beating the drum, defending him since the season started. I don't feel differently, although I mean, just in general, like nobody. You, know, you go watch the Saints game; you can see the effort held him out of the end zone, all that good stuff. I don't think anybody on the defense 
had like this commendable performance against the Packers. Like they were unsound against the run. They were, you know, out of alignment. Didn't, I mean, they got, they deserve credit for putting pressure on Rodgers, in my opinion, but they didn't keep him contained. Garrett said it yesterday. He got out of the mm-hmm. well, quote unquote, way too often. Uh, that, but go throw on the tape and like you can see what the Packers did. Like the tight ends are staying in with Lawrence. Mm-hmm. They're using receivers to kind of shoulder him and chip him as he's coming off the line. Like offenses are planning to stop this guy. Like you can what you can see it. And it sucks because I can hear fans, and to some degree, I I sort of sympathize or agree with them. Is like you know, it's not like opposing offenses aren't doing that to Khalil Mack, and he still seems to be able to put his stamp on a game. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now he's he's a different level of dude. Yeah. Well, DeMar- I mean he yeah. he's he's not getting paid that much more than Demarcus. I know, but he's still like he's better than everybody else. I know, you're, you're yeah, right. He's but better than everybody. Else. That's what fans want, and yeah. uh, and when you're losing games, that's what they're gonna say. They're probably entitled to say that. I mean, yeah. if Demarcus Lawrence has got to put up with people saying he's not playing well enough, his gigantic paycheck is going to hit on <laughs> Tuesday morning, and he should be fine. Yeah. Um, I think he's played better than a lot of people want to give him credit for. I don't think anybody played that great of a game against the Packers, so I'm just kind of lukewarm on it right now. But and I don't think there's some sort of problem with Demarcus Lawrence. Definitely not. And like, who's doing? Who's saying this? Like. It's just a general fan complaint. I mean, you see it on Twitter, and and, and fans are, are questioning it. And to be honest with you, I mean, there's some radio shows that are questioning it and saying you paid him all this money. It, it is what it is. Yeah. And to be honest with you, this is no different than every single person that's played with the Cowboys has gotten a new contract. They are held In to it. Like you said at the beginning of this show, they are held to a different standard. Once you make that money, there's a different standard that's attached to it because there's a different amount of money that's being paid. So I get it. The only point I'm making is, I'm, and what the question I'm asking is, is it really warranted? Um, and everything I've seen suggests that he's playing really hard, and he certainly is still being disrupted. Yeah. And that's the part that you pay for with Demarcus Lawrence, especially in situations where teams are are making a concerted effort to take him out of games. Can he still be disruptive, and can he create opportunities for other people? And I think that's yeah. happening. Yeah, and I, I mean, agree. it goes all the way back to. I mean, I remember when Dion got five years, $35 million, seven a year. I mean, that was unheard of, you know, for a corner. <laughs> Front page of the Sports Illustrated. And, you know, he had three or four interceptions that year. Oh, my God. Like, paying all this for this. But, you know, they won the Super Bowl. And Larry Brown, who was a good – average to good cornerback at best, had nine that year mm-hmm. and was the MVP of the Super Bowl. I wonder why. You know, so, I mean, it, but it happens. Marion Barber, Terrence Newman – uh, Miles Austin, Doug Free, Tony Romo, um, Brandon Carr, Tom Crawford. It doesn't even have to be a Crawford. big deal. That it's was just a big you one. get you get a deal that's above what people think you should get. Yeah, and you're not performing at a level that they think is is commensurate with that. Then they're going to say that that's a problem. You can see you can see the effect that you can see the respect that opponents are giving to him, mm-hmm. and so that is a plenty of a barometer for me. I think he's playing fine. I think I think he could be playing better. I think damn near everybody on the defense could be playing better. I right. tell you that, too. Yeah. They have not hit their stride at all. And, <laughs> and I, I, I'm no excuse, but, I mean, you know, I'm not doing the whole guys get paid, too, but if you were to rank the tackles in the league, yeah. the tackle duo, everyone thanks Tyron and, and Lyle, I bet you – the Packers have a better tackle duo in the league. They're very good. Bak- Bakhtari. Actually, I saw. And um, Belaga are better. I believe right. I saw, you know, I follow Packers beat writers. Uh, Bulaga's given up, I think, no sacks. And he's played, he's gone against Daniil Hunter, Demarcus Lawrence, Khalil Mack flip flops, but yeah. he's played against him some too. Like, he's played a murderer's row these first five yeah. weeks and has been outstanding. So, yeah, I. I think Demarcus Lawrence, just like everybody else on the defense, could be playing better. I don't think there's some sort of problem, or you know, he's not living up to his contract. Go out this week, get zero sacks, don't not play well against the Jets. If this, we'll if, sit here on Monday. No. And we'll, we'll talk about some problems. For, if it, for it, no it doubt, it doesn't have to be D Law, but like if they cannot generate some pressure in this game, then something's wrong because mm-hmm. they've given up 15 in the last two. I'm yeah. glad to see Doris Armstrong kind of step up there. And not just the sack. He had some other nice plays mm-hmm. in there, too, because of the first few weeks of the season, I was kind of like, I mean, why are you sitting down, Taco, you know, for this guy? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not, like, that much better, but he's he's starting to pick it up a little bit. Hyder, those guys rotate. I yeah. mean, that's what's weird about it. We talked about this in the press box. I mean, 
Rod's not afraid to, to rotate equally, but it's like, well, they don't pay equally. No. Yeah. Yeah, and it hasn't. Uh, that's another thing too. It hasn't gone lost among fans either. Right. It's like, well, it's third down. What's Kerry Hyder and Dem- uh, exactly. Dorrance Armstrong doing in there? Yep. I don't have an awesome answer for you. I don't Maybe either. That's something... Other than the defensive coordinator likes to rotate his defensive front. That's all. That's all I got for you. Like that's wow. that's all we know, right? All right, let's take our final break. When we come back, we got to talk about special teams. There were a couple guys on special teams this last week that I don't know. They brought us reason to be able to talk about them on this show. So we're going to talk about them. We'll do that right that when we come right back. This is DallasCowboys.com radio. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay. What's not too? Right above the subway. Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the. That's my neighbor, Angus. A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store and learn how to buy one smartphone and get a second one on us. Based on GWS One Score, September 2018. It's time for Tailgate with the Otterbox Boys. Otterbox? The makers of those crazy protective phone cases? The one and only. They're also wild about protecting parking lot parties from sad drinks. It's why they made Elevation Tumblers. Rumor around the crockpot is they're made from stainless steel with a copper lining to keep temps hot or cold. True. They even come in seven different sizes, up to 64 ounce, the growler. Mm. I like how Otterbox drinks. I mean, thanks. And that's been tailgating with the Otterbox boys. Check out all the colors and sizes of their elevation tumblers at otterbox.com. A man's Stetson doesn't just protect him from life's elements. It projects an unstoppable and legendary spirit, just like the men wearing silver and navy on the field every Sunday. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. They are still the official crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find Stetson hats in the pro shop or at stetson.com today. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with sideline access and photo ops with current players, alumni, and cheerleaders. That's not all, though. You'll get to talk X's and O's with Senior Director of Player Personnel, Will McClay, and, of course, with yours truly, me, Brian Broaddus. You can trust the official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and with us, you'll travel like a pro. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. Back to the break. Free to play. <laughs> Dave got in. I got in. I don't think Did I... Did Dave get in? Yeah, I got oh, in. Dave was in first place this week, weren't you? Was or I really? Place? I didn't even look. For a little bit. Come Sorry, on, man. Play on. What we're talking I, about... I, I forgot. I will. I'll yeah. look. That's awesome. Go me. What we're talking about <laughs> is a free-to-play predictive game in the Cowboys app to win. Why are you shaking your head, Dan? I... Uh, you can win ten thousand dollars in a grand prize unless you start late, like we did. We don't have a get chance to do that, or because we work here. But fans must be twenty one or older and logged in to play. Download the app for access on game days at dallascowboys dot com slash app. No, it doesn't say all that. I just ad libbed a little bit. I, I realized you ad libbed. I was about to say, just read it. Just, just read just it. Just read it. We're good. Just read all it. All right. Cool. <laughs> Check out free to play predictive games and the Dallas Cowboys app to win cash prizes up to ten thousand dollars grand prize. Fans must be twenty one or older and logged in to play. Download the app and access on game days at dallascowboys.com slash app. Need a better read voice, but uh, otherwise good. Shut up, Miles. <laughs> One's talking to you. Just because your team's four and over there. Well, he's team. 49ers. He works for the Niners. Oh, does he? Yeah. I thought he was still working in finances. No. Financials. No, he works for the Niners. Can't you hmm. tell? They're really good. They are really good. What y'all think about that last night? They're good. There's two or three teams every year that are way better than you thought, and there's two or three teams. And this is in every conference that are not as good as you thought. And I think the Niners are in that group. I hope the Cowboys are not in the other one because they (laughs) might be. Yeah, you just don't know at this point. Yeah, there's all because of schedule and all that stuff. You get a chance, and the Niners look like they're going to be pretty good. The Bucks might be a team that. You know, or the Lions? What what did the Lions do last week? They off? I think they were off. Oh yeah, they were off. Had to get a new kicker. That's right. Um, nice segue. They might be good. What? Huh? Talking about kickers and getting new kickers. Talk to me about the Cowboys kicker. I mean, Brett Gumbo Maher, show. Yeah. Brett May- Meyer, he uh, he went one of three in this last game. He missed a 54-yarder, missed a 33-yarder, made a 36-yarder. You guys think the Cowboys need to be looking? Yes, they should be looking. They are Should looking. they make a move? They're looking. That depends on who's out there. There you go. That honestly, like – I'm not convinced. I'm not trying to convince anybody they should feel comfortable with Brett Maher, but like I spent the break looking at the whole break. No, not the, break. the commercial break, not the show. 
I like looking at who's available, mm-hmm. and it, I mean, it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. Uh, Cody Parkey just, he just got signed. He yeah. just signed. Like the double doink <laughs> oh, guy. Did he? Yeah, the double doink guy that was like the villain of the NFL playoffs. Yeah. It's so bad around the league that he just got signed. Uh, what I don't understand. Can I think somebody Blair Walsh, who missed an like an extra point length kick in the playoffs a few yeah. years ago, he's out there. Uh, Kai Forbath, I think it, he's trying out, or he tried out with the Titans, but I, like he's probably the most experienced NFL kicker who's available right now. Maybe you can explain this to me, Dave. Maybe Danny. I don't know how much you know. I know Dave loves soccer. Explain oh, to me boy. how soccer is the most popular sport in the world. Almost every country has players that play it. There are countries that are that have players that play it extremely well, yet the NFL can't come up with 32 good kickers in the NFL. Like, what's the problem? Are they not tapping into those? So I would assume there are guys that finish playing soccer that have great legs that can really kick the ball. That all you got to do is just teach them the difference between teaching kicking a football versus a soccer ball. But I would assume that it's the same similar principles, right? What See what these soccer players make. They'd no, I'm saying kick some a round the, ball. No, I'm saying some of the ones that are, some of the ones that are done, like some of the ones that are reaching toward the end of their soccer I know career. People who, I mean, it's different than the NFL, but in college, soccer players didn't play football and went to college and just kicked. Yeah, them. right. I, I just don't understand why there aren't more kickers. What? What? what, what? It's one thing for quarterback. I don't. That is a unique skill, right? But there are tons. It seems like there are tons of soccer players in the world. Why is there not somebody that said, you know, I'm going to create an academy to turn soccer players into NFL they kickers should. and make a ton of money? Carly Lloyd. It, I, yeah, I don't have a great answer for you. I know, honestly, what's funny is like uh, Australian rules football is revolutionizing the punting game in right? American football. Yeah. Like half of it seems like half the good punters in college and, and occasionally pro football are Australian guys. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I, like, I don't know. I mean, because if you're good at soccer, then it's way more lucrative to pursue that. Like, I mean, I'm talking about Europeans and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then, I don't know. I, I, I yeah. I just wonder if the, I wonder if even the <laughs> average. put me on the spot. I, no, I, no, and I, honestly, it was more of a, it's probably a rhetorical question to some degree, but I know how much you lost. I was actually hoping you I were going to say, hey, it's such a difference between kicking it, a no, soccer it ball definitely and is. NFL football. It absolutely that, that is. It just is not translatable. It absolutely you know? is a gig- all those people attacking you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, there's the other people trying to kill you. There's the difference in weight and shape of the ball for that. Like yeah. soccer balls are light as a feather. But a strong a leg feather, is a strong these. leg, right? And that's, yeah. that, seems to be, that seems to be the it's first. It's a completely different mechanic, too. Is it? Yeah. It's okay. it's all different. I mean, even with a freak, I mean, like if you're doing, a I freak will say, kick, and in my elementary understanding of both sports, I think somebody who's talented enough to kick a soccer ball across like full field length, yeah, should be able to work on it for a couple years and be pretty good at kicking field. And goals. that's my point. I don't know. Right? And I would think that I would think that I'm not even talking about your best players. I'm talking about the average player that plays MLS soccer in the U.S. Could he not? In a year or two, develop into a really good NFL kicker with a really strong leg. Probably. But why? Because MLS guys don't make near the money that NFL players do. Probably have think. more job security being a solid player for an MLS team than right. a kicker for an NFL team. Yeah. I don't know what a guy it makes for them. It depends. Earthquakes. It's Is that it, a team? It's yes. It's Founders. all. It's yeah. Both of those are teams. Yeah, right? Sounders yeah. are in Seattle. It's. I know that. This is such a – y'all are so patronizing. Yes, no, they're I'm both just, teams. I want to know. They're both MLS I don't, teams. I don't know all the MLS The teams. spectrum of salaries in the MLS ranges wildly depending on right, a right. lot of different factors. But and, some and of them, a lot of their is, players are paid quite nicely. And that's my point, though, is not talking about the really great ones, talking about the ones that don't make a ton of money. All right. I would think they have that kind of strong leg. But the point is – they're there doesn't seem enough, like a, there are enough kickers to yeah. go around here, and so no. if well, you're going to get rid of Maher, who are you going to bring? Assuming in? they don't get Kobe Jones here, like what, <laughs> what are they? What are they going to go do? Like I, I, I think, and Jerry said it on his radio show today on 105.3 The Fan that he basically said just score touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's what the analytics people would prefer we, you do. I mean, he said that in his post game too. He said we we can't just say this game came down to field goals. We weren't scoring touchdowns. Here's the issue I have though. What's an extra point? 34 yards? 34, yeah. 33, 34. That's the the, lo- the longest field goal he's made is 36. No, and that's I mean the well Wow, really? This year? Yeah, I guess this year he hasn't made it. He's four. He of missed seven. the 54 this week. He's missed the 54. He's missed the 52. And then I wonder he what it was thir- last year. 
Oh, last year. He well, got you know, last year he was six of seven, yeah. 50 yards or yeah, more. He was if you promised me year. he was just automatic from inside of like 40, that, that would be a start. You know, yeah. and that's the thing that makes it troubling is like it's playing out exactly how we saw it. Like he struggled from up close all through training camp and, and it seems to be carrying he, over. Here's here. the real issue that I have with, with Maher because most kickers, the great ones, they've said just put the 35 in it, just put it down. Laces. I'll kick the laces. I'll whatever. Just put it down. The problem with him is we all know that he he kicks better from one side or the other, and he definitely knows because on extra points, if you notice, he's on the left hash for extra points because everything goes right. Well, third down, Dak misses a throw. Sorry, it's on the right hash. We need you to make this kick, and what does it do? It goes to the right. He knows it. Everyone knows it. So the the fact that he can't kick the ball exactly where he wants to even in the 33 yarders that's a problem for for me cuz it's a problem for him i will say this at the risk of sounding like i'm carrying water for the coaching staff i think they are doing the only smart thing they can do right now because kicking is so mental right that i mean it's such a mental thing is so really the only thing you can do is just keep saying we believe in him we believe in him we have confidence like we we don't doubt you and hopefully it carries Until over the one day well, when they decide well, to make a change hopefully yeah. yeah and exactly like but there's no sense in throwing him under right. the bus and completely killing whatever confidence he has so just speak it into existence I guess, and obviously if it keeps being a problem, they'll be forced to do something. I mean, if he misses a kick or kicks, plural, in this next game, then I don't think you have a choice but to bring somebody in here. But for the time being, like, we look at the list. Like, there's no definitively better option. You might as well just try your best to back your guy while it still makes sense to do so. Would you guys take a shot on a guy like Blair Walsh that, that once was a really great kicker and just kind of mentally fell off the map? Do you think he's done? Or you think, mm-hmm. and sometimes in those kind of instances, you bring a guy in different scenery, so maybe gets it back. Happens all the time with kickers, where like a guy who struggles gets a change of scenery and Bailey's, plays better. Bailey's turning it around a little bit. Yeah, Minnesota. he played. Has he? I, I, yeah, he had a nice game. I'm a homer, but LSU had a great kicker last year named Cole Tracy. He made a, he made half a dozen big kicks for us, and like nobody in the NFL has ever given him a chance. I saw he's in the XFL draft. Something about his. Mm-hmm approach or the way the ball comes off his foot like nfl teams are just like no you're not good enough for this league which seems crazy to me like i would at least i would at least take a look at him like he was clutch as hell in college so i just don't understand enough about kicking to be able to get to the bottom of that but if they keep if he keeps missing kicks they're not going to have a choice but to look around all right guys appreciate you joining us we'll be back tomorrow 11 45 till then for nick eatman dave hellman danny sarek this is Derek eagleton this has been the break live on dallascowboys.com Radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!